Hello, in this lesson we're going to talk about gravity and motion. When you're done with this lesson, here's what you should be able to do. Uh, I can understand that time, such as day, night, months, years, those are all based on Earth's motion. I can understand that objects in the sky move in predictable patterns. I can explain the force of gravity. And I can understand how distance and mass impact gravity. Revolution and rotation. This school year, we've already discussed revolution and rotation, but this is still a good chance to review. Recall that revolution is the time it takes an object to travel around another object. Rotation is the spinning motion of an object on its own axis. Earth revolves around the sun in about 365 and a quarter days, which we also call a year. And it rotates on its axis and makes a complete turn in approximately 24 hours or one day. We base our idea of time on these space travels that our planet is going through. Scientists do have other ways of measuring time, but for most folks it's our planet's motions that really tell us when it's day, night, and after so many days have passed, weeks, months, and even years. One thing to keep in mind is that other planets are also in motion. Our planet's not the only one. Each planet revolves around the sun and it rotates on its own axis. The revolution and rotation time for each planet is unique. It's different for each planet. Although there are different times for rotation and revolution depending on which planet uh, you're observing, they still move at predictable and consistent times. And if they are staying at the same speeds, then we can actually make predictions on where they will be in the future. The same is true for our planet. Gravity, the force. All objects have a gra gravitational attraction towards each other. They have a gravitational force. The strength of the force is related to the mass of the objects and the distance between those objects. One of the reasons that we are not floating around in space right now is because of the attraction force between us and the Earth. We are pulling on the Earth because we have mass, but the Earth has a lot more mass and pulls us towards it. In the time that we live, we have the technology to actually get away from Earth through rockets and even, to some extent, some special airplanes folks have been developing. We can actually get far enough away from the Earth so that the distance is great enough, that Earth is no longer pulling on us with so much force that we can actually kind of float around. I'll admit that gravity is kind of a strange idea or concept without getting into some nerdy physics. And as much as I love Star Wars, thus the picture of Yoda, this gravity force is not actually the force that they're talking about in Star Wars. In fact, gravity is just one kind of force. One of the weird kind of ideas, at least in my mind, is that gravity actually pulls space objects in a curved path. Okay, Part of the reason we have orbits is because gravity can actually bend space and uh, cause it to curve. A little later we're going to watch a video kind of showing this idea of bending space and, and showing the idea of objects moving around them. In the previous slide we were talking about gravity, the force, and I'd mentioned distance and mass. I've tried to put together a kind of summary here, summary diagram of the two factors or two influences on the force, both distance and mass. You can see in the red arrow pointing up, uh, that's to demonstrate that the force is increasing, and then in the blue arrow that force is decreasing on the right. To have a greater gravitational force, an increase in force, two things must happen. The objects must have more mass, so the more mass you have, the more gravitational force you have, or the distance must decrease or be smaller. So you can keep two objects the same mass, but if you put them closer together, the force between them is actually stronger. For the gravitational force to decrease, you can make the masses smaller, or so therefore two smaller objects have less gravitational force than two larger objects do. Or you can increase the distance. So you can take two massive items, two very big items, objects, and if you have them far enough away from each other, the gravitational force will be less so that we are not crashing into the sun. That's a good thing. 
I am not suggesting an alternate universe where Earth has 12 moons or something like that. What I'm talking about here is the fact that our moon is not the only moon in our solar system. The moon is a satellite. I'm not claiming that people built the moon or that it's some sort of death star in the sky. Uh, but our moon is what we call a satellite. A satellite is, is really any object in space that orbits a larger object or a larger body. Usually when we think of satellites, we think of the ones that we've put up in space. So we could actually call our moon a natural satellite. In some ways, we could consider the Earth to be a satellite to the sun because we are a smaller object moving around another. The moon versus moons. There are six planets in our solar system that have moons. Uh, we have a moon, but again, we're not unique there. We call ours the moon. Uh, but most others, most other planets, they have moons, but they actually have specific names for them. Uh, we have uh, dozens and dozens of moons in our solar system. In fact, some of our larger planets, like Jupiter and Saturn, have dozens of their own. Like the planets, moons also rotate on an axis. And also like the planets, moons have different speeds and types of rotations. Earth's gravity keeps our moon in its orbit. In the same way, the sun's gravity is keeping our planet and all of the other planets in orbit around it. Okay, at this point we're going to watch a uh, video clip. It's about a four or five minute video clip about general relativity. And they're going to get into a little more nerdy science and explain a bit more about gravity. <laughs> 